morning, everybody. I hope you guys are having a great day so far. Some of you guys are like, Drew, why do you look so glossy and dewy today? And that's actually natural sweat. The air conditioner broke in my apartment. It's currently 85 degrees. It broke yesterday. The guy is coming to fix it tomorrow. It's slowly rising. It was 83 this morning. Now it's 85. So it's going to probably be at 87 by the time I get back from Ikea. So I'm currently going to Ikea and a couple of other stores. That way I can use their air conditioning to cool off a little bit before I come back to my dungeon. But besides that, I'm having a really, really great day. And I'm super excited because I'm actually going to be heading to Ikea to work on a DIY project for you guys. Now, as many of you guys know, I do random kind of one-off larger scale vloggy style projects every now and then, and this is going to be one of those projects. In the past, you guys absolutely loved when I turned that Ikea Billy bookcase into a woven cane like storage hutch, and I was obsessed with it. So I kind of wanted to do something similar because I'm actually currently working on my living room makeover and I need a new media console for my TV. The one in my old apartment just clashes really badly with the floor because there are two different tones of like yellow orange wood so I really want something more on the black side when it comes to the media console I was on Pinterest the other day and I came across this image here and I was absolutely obsessed with this I looked everywhere online for like a similar piece just to honestly purchase and everything online was between twelve hundred and twenty five hundred dollars for a similar kind of rattan style media console editing drew popping in really quickly I actually posted this inspo photo on my Instagram stories and you guys found the initial source of this picture this sideboards actually from HK living com and it's sixteen hundred and ninety five dollars i had no idea where the source of this project came from though and you guys came through and found it so thank you guys so much for that but let's get back to the project so i rushed over to ikea's website i knew i could probably find a base of like a media console or like a buffet or something that i can use from their site and then craft it into what i want it to be and that's what we're doing today so let's go ahead we're gonna head over to ikea right now i'll take you guys along with me and i'll probably see you when i get there so let's get started and get on the road so I'm at Ikea right now and I just picked up all the pieces that I need for the media console. It was kind of like a build your own system. So I got the TV unit base and I'll make sure to put all of the pieces I got on the screen for you guys in case you want to create a similar one. I got the three internal shelves. I got four leg sets to put on the bottom, the hinges over here. And these are the drawer fronts here. I got one more just in case I mess up because I've never actually used a jigsaw before. So we're going to have to see how this goes. It's going to be a trial and error. So I got one more just in case because it's only $20. They'll never get why the Ikea carts, like, they just run wild. Good morning, everybody. It is the second day of this Ikea transformation. Now, I got all of my pieces yesterday at Ikea, which you guys probably already saw. And today I'm going to be kind of creating the template for the front of the cabinet. So I have some paper here that I want to use to create a template for the drawer fronts. This is just a roll of filming paper that I have. You can use wrapping paper, whatever you have to create a template. So I'm going to start off first by kind of measuring out my template and give you guys the idea of how I'm going to be creating it. This is the front side of the door, and this is the back side here because as you can see, the hinges are gonna go into these two holes. That way there's the most space for these hinges, so it's kind of gonna be something like this uh, when I cut it out on here. One and a half inches is enough space, so this will be like the skinniest portion is one and a half. I might want to do two. No, I think one and a half. So I'm going to cut um, this square down three inches on all of the sides. So I'm going to go ahead and cut three inches off this side and three inches off this side. That way it's an equal one and a half on all of them. If you guys can tell based off this inspo photo, um, this side here kind of has like a straight edge and then it kind of curves into this uh, oval shape on the sides. So I kind of wanted to recreate that by having a little bit of a straightness to start. And then I kind of created this curve here and I freehanded the whole thing. So next what I'm gonna do is just cut this shape out and then I'm gonna tweak it as I feel like it needs to be tweaked. And I'm also gonna start it out just a little more and then kind of fade it into the line that I created. So I wasn't a fan of my original template. It was just too skinny over in this section here. So I actually folded it onto another piece of paper and laid it down, traced it on top here, and then kind of recreated this shape here, which I think will be a little bit better. I'm going to start cutting it 
just a little bit in. Alrighty, so I laid out all of the drawer fronts on the floor here, and basically it is the hinges on the left here, hinges on the right here, hinges on the left here, which means on the back side, those circles are right here, 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 and then here and here, because basically I want this piece to go right here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and apply painter's tape around everywhere that there's going to be a cut line. That way I can actually create a pencil line on top of the tape, and then it's also gonna protect the surface when I use the jigsaw, and lastly, it's also going to prevent chipping from this fiber board, which is like a pressed board. I have the full little half circle shape cut or traced onto the top of the piece here and before using the jigsaw I actually need to drill holes in both of the 90 degree angles so I need a drilled hole here and I also need a drilled hole here so I have my drill I put a little wood underneath it so that I could drill through and stop but you're basically just gonna want to drill all the way in that corner that way you could get your jigsaw in there to start the cut I'm gonna be using this Ryobi jigsaw to cut this. Now I have it on a speed setting of two because this one here shows that fiber board is at a two. And then I'm also using this blade here, which I got this at Home Depot as well. It's a steel cut wood scroll blade. So I figured it would be better for like delicate work. And then I'm gonna adjust the speed up here as I kind of go with it. But yeah, this is what it looks like. I found that this scroll saw blade worked really, really well, and also a high speed also worked well on this fiber board. So I suggest going at a more rapid speed and then also working slowly just to make sure that the cuts are nice and clean. Oh my gosh, you guys, look how perfect this door turned out. The cut is amazing. I do have to go in and sand a couple spots here, which I'm just gonna probably do off camera, just sand those to make them a little bit cleaner. But this shape is just perfect. I love it. So I'm gonna mirror the other door and do like the flipped side of it. So it's gonna look like that on the other side and then do one more door. Uh, so let's go ahead and cut those doors as well. So I cut the second one. I don't know if you can tell here, there's a little bit of like a residue. So when I want to do like a fine sanding, I use this 220 grit sandpaper. And then when I wanna actually sand off a good portion, like I sanded off this whole entire edge here, um, I use an, uh, I think this is an 80 grit which is just like a coarser sandpaper. Good news, I took a little like hour break because the air conditioner guy came over and fixed the air conditioner, which was super, super amazing. So it's finally cooling down here. I was literally dripping sweat while sawing the wood, but you know what? You gotta do what you gotta do. So I'm gonna share with you guys what the two doors look like next to each other. Here are all three doors completely cut and they look perfect. Now keep in mind, I have never used a jigsaw in my life before and the jigsaw I purchased was from Home Depot. It was like $60 or so and I'm gonna be using it from now on for sure. It was super simple and easy to use and I'm just very, very happy with the outcome of these doors. They look great. There are some tiny, tiny little like imperfections where I wish this was maybe rounded a tiny bit more, but honestly, it's nothing you're gonna even be able to tell once it's fully constructed. So I placed in a little bit of this cane here, which is like the circular woven style rattan. I also have the open mesh style here, which you guys have seen me use multiple times in the past. However, I think the circular style is the one I'm gonna go for. I just love the way that this looks. However, I only have a piece big enough for one of the drawer fronts. So I'm gonna head over to the cane shop and buy a little bit more to fill in these sections as well. So 
So I got the cane that I needed. Um, I got nine feet of it, and I also got some of these reed splines. And then I also got this 5 8 inch flat reed, um, which I want to finish off the inside of the doors with where I cut. Also, huge shout out to the cane and basket supply shop in Los Angeles. The lady Susan in there is so nice. If you guys ever stop by, tell her I said hello because she's amazing. They have so many different supplies there. Definitely check them out. I'll put their address on the screen for you guys. It's literally right in Miracle Mile area, if you know where that is. Um, so definitely check them out because they have such a wide variety of canes and just like materials for really cool projects. I just got back from the cane shop. Here's my big roll of cane. I actually cut the exact length that I needed for this project and also added on a couple of inches because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be soaking this in warm water in my bathtub for about 30 minutes prior to stapling it on the backside. That is actually the proper way to apply this cane material to projects is to soak it first because then you staple it. It kind of becomes a bit elastic and then as you staple it and let it dry, it actually shrinks up and creates a really, really tight finish. So Now, when it comes to stapling down the cane, it's actually super simple. I used a quarter inch staple, that way it didn't pop out the front side, and I stapled down about every inch and a half, that way it was just super, super secure. I applied quite a bit of staples to the back side, but no one's gonna see it at all, and it may feel a little bit loose. However, when that cane material dries after being soaked, it actually shrinks and gets really, really tight on the front side, so it's gonna look amazing. I just brought the doors outside. I'm gonna leave them out here until they're fully dry and it should shrink up the cane and make it really nice and tight on the inside. There's also another one over here and then we're gonna finish it off afterwards. It is now about two hours after I put them outside and you guys, they are perfect. I don't know if you can tell. I wanna show you how, like, I don't, can you tell how tight this is attached on there? There's literally no bounce to it at all, so it worked perfectly. It's super nice and snug. All of them are filled with the cane material now, and it looks so pretty. I'm so happy with how this is turning out so far. To finish off the doors, I started by painting the flat reed black, and I used a little bit of golden carbon black paint because that's the most opaque black paint that I have, and I mixed it with a tiny bit of just an interior paint um, from Valspar to thin it out a little bit. So I painted the front side and the edges of all of the reed pieces, and then we're going to go ahead and glue them on the inside of the door. Now adding this second piece of reed spline on the inside is totally optional. I just felt like it gave it a double finished look, like it just really cleaned up that whole shape and really defined the look of it. However, if you don't like this piece, you could totally leave it as is because it looks really great and finished already. And some of you guys might be like, oh my gosh, you are hot gluing your furniture. And yes, I am because I'm using a special glue stick by Gorilla Glue, which is just super, super strong bond. I'll link it below for you guys from Amazon. just finished finishing one of the doors. Now, from this view, it might be a little hard to tell, but when I come in closer, you can see that this is an unfinished door. It still has that like fiberboard pressed Ikea wood situation in there. This is what the finished door looks like. How perfect is that? So I basically painted that flat reed and then I glued it all the way on the edge and then touched up any areas where it needed it and then went in with the reed spline and glued that right on top to kind of finish off and just make the shape look a little bit more clean. And this is what it ended up turning out like. I think it looks awesome. I love the way it turned out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of them and that's gonna finish up the doors. Wow, you guys, it has been a long day, but a very, very productive one. I finished all three of the door fronts and they look perfect. I finished them with the little reed spline inside, but I'm gonna go ahead and catch you guys in the morning. The sun is setting right now. It's a nice golden glow in here, but I'm gonna catch you guys tomorrow morning where we're going to finish assembling the base unit, putting the doors on and styling this media unit. 
Hello everyone, it is day three. I wanted to first start off by kind of showing you guys what I was talking about with the yellowish tone of this wood just not really going with the wood underneath. Does that make sense? That's why I wanted to originally create a new media console for this space and today we are going to be finishing it. So yesterday you saw the doors being finished and today I'm going to be building the base of the project. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and construct the base. I didn't want to go into too much detail when constructing this piece because of course I just followed the IKEA instruction manual and then I went ahead and used the hinges to apply the doors to the front of the TV unit. It was super super easy to construct, the pieces were very minimal, and it probably took me about an hour to do so. Oh my gosh, you guys, this looks exactly how I wanted it to. It looks incredible so far. Everything fit together perfectly. The legs look amazing. There's still some Ikea stuff underneath them, but I initially actually had this door put on wrong. I had it flipped 180 and I was like, there is something off about this. And then I ended up fixing it, but there is one more element that I want to share with you guys. These are some really cool brushed brass handles that I found on Amazon and I'll link these below for you guys. They're pull handles and I've never personally used a handle like this before, but let me share with you how it works. So you can use this on like any cabinet drawer that you want to pull out it kind of is like a flush mount so it just goes slips right behind the door and then you kind of put it into its position close it and for instance like it would kind of pop out on the front like this and you can pull the door open like that because I feel like this is just gonna add a nice little touch and kind of make it look a bit more expensive than it is and moved the console over into its place. It's new home and it looks incredible. However, I want to do a little bit of styling and do like a mini reveal because you guys have kind of already seen it. Little bits here and there, but you haven't seen it in its full glory yet. So let's get to styling and then I'm gonna share with you the final project. finishes off today's project. I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. It was such a fun one and I definitely experimented a lot with this project. I had never used a jigsaw before. I had never properly installed cane into something before. So there's a couple new things. I also learned about these drawer pulls, which are pretty cool or like door pulls, I guess you could say. It ended up turning out amazing and I'm gonna put the total cost of this project on a screen for you guys so you can see how much of a fraction of the price it was from the original piece. Now, I also wanna give credit to the people who of course created this item and I do think that it's probably worth the money if you don't want to create this piece because cane furniture is all handmade it's very time consuming and they had to do a lot of the same stuff I had to do however theirs is probably even better because it's professionally done so I'm gonna go ahead and link the original side table below for you guys as well I found out that it does come in black too so if you want the black one they have the pink one as well but without further ado I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video if you are not already make sure to subscribe to my channel I post brand new home decor and DIY content here on Lone Fox every single week and also some of the styling decor up here is from my website lonefox.com like my favorite lavender candle over there this mini heart dish right here which is so cute it's like a little trinket holder is also from my site so check out Lone Fox for home decor finds and just specialty goods so I'll catch you guys all in my next video have an amazing rest of your day bye guys